for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. Blessed be the Lord. We are all here. I am here. You are here as well. And our friends are at home. But we are all before God. Geographically speaking, someone could be far away from us. Our show is being broadcast in Japan. It's being broadcast in many other countries, even in countries where it's forbidden to talk about the gospel. But I've sent the message of God on Facebook, and there are people out there following us. And not just a few people, it's a lot of people. Specifically where they follow another religion, there's lots of people who are following us on Facebook and like our page and follow us in the name of Jesus. And they don't speak Portuguese, it's all written in English. They're all following us and being blessed. And we've been doing some great work, brethren. The world is learning about Jesus and at least we're directing. I mean, who do we think we are? <laughs> we're helping many people to make peace with God because people will be directed. God gives the revelation. People grasp it, and then things happen. So stay tuned because God will tell us lots of things today in the name of the Lord Jesus. We have to remain firm in the word of God. My brethren, there's a word in Luke 21:35 which was said by the Lord Jesus. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Let's look at this. So the message is for everyone on earth. It doesn't matter where people live, whether the person is rich or poor, a faraway country, a close country, and, or a Christian country and a country that's not Christian. And that day will come as a snare. All of a sudden, when people open up their eyes, it will have happened. And Jesus is saying here it will, for it will come as a snare on all those, those of us who are following Jesus. We are part of this too. We are not going to be warned, no. There's no such thing as, I dreamed that Jesus was coming back, so I'm going to repent. This won't happen. So what is it that we have to do? Observe it. My Lord, I could die any time now, so I have to be in peace with you. If we are in peace, and he's warning us so that we are, he didn't say that randomly. If we're at peace, we are going to be saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you now. God, thank you so much for warning us. God, help us. Help us to make amends with you today. And from today on, God, may we never again, may... May we not ignore your commandments. It's quite the opposite. May we all be prepared for the great day when you arrive. As Jesus said in the parable of the virgins, we'll take oil in the vessels with our lamps. Now, God, I'm going to bless all these people who joined me in prayer, and I'm going to do it in your name. In the name of Jesus, I cast out the evil from every one of their lives, and I say to you, demon, who has been tempting these people to ignore the Lord God, go away in the name of Jesus. And amen. Amen? Praise the Lord. Rest assured, because God is much more interested in you and your well-being, because God is our God of righteousness. He is a God who works. Our God doesn't wait to do things later. He wants us all to become triumphant in our lives. Don't try to hide, but I'm a lost case. I was born this way. I can't change, forget that. It doesn't matter where you come from, whether poor or wealthy, really. You could be of African, Asian, European, indigenous origin. It's all the same thing. Don't turn away because God has plans for your life, amen? We are all children of God. We all have a divine purpose for his honor. Now let's open our Bibles and turn to Psalm 119, verse number 26. Let's read what the psalmist wrote here. I'm just going to read this verse and then move on. I have declared my ways and you answered me. And then it reads, teach me your statutes. God can only listen to you and answer you when you truly search for him with all of your heart, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Of course, God is omniscient. And once you turn your back on God, no, no, I don't care, I'll do it. He knows what's going to happen to you. And what's that? Bad things will happen. It's just like what happened to that lost son who said, Father, give me my goods, I don't want to be here. 
the father did it. And he journeyed to a far country. And he was in orgies. He wasted all of his possessions. Nothing, nothing could ever help him. Just the opposite. He had many friends while he had possessions. But money one day ends. Health one day ends. Life one day ends. Even childhood ends. Interest ends as well. Those who are interested in such, they disappear. It's all over. Now that man really wanted to get a job, but he couldn't. He was sent to feed swine, and so he went. But he didn't even have money to buy food for himself to eat. He even wanted to eat the food the swine ate. And many people will do that, but no one gave him anything. The world doesn't give the food swine eat to he who has nothing. When there's money, it's all good. It's all hugs. Hey, John, you look great. Hey, Elizabeth, you look wonderful. Once it's over, it's over. They will despise you. That's his case. But he did something very important. I'm going to read this passage to you about what he did so you know what you're supposed to do. It's in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse number 17. The prodigal son... Let's see what happened. Verse number 18, verses 17 and 18. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my brother's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. What a great misfortune that this man incurred when he took his goods and left. If the servants of his father had bread to spare, much more for him. But now he wanted the food of the swine, but he came to himself and he said, I will go to my father. I have sinned. I did something I shouldn't have. And he told his father about everything. Let's turn back to Psalm 119 now. I have declared my ways. First of all, the son should have gone to his father and said, Father, I really need your help. His father represents God here. I am being tempted to journey to far away, to ask you to give me my possessions. I am being tempted to take part in orgies. Whoever wants to be in the world wants that. No one leaves Jesus just out of the blue. Temptation has already seduced them and people simply drift away. Somehow, in some way, they want to do something wrong. And some people have everything to date. Their tables are laden. They have all sorts of things, but they wish they had the enemy's food. It could be some love affair, which will cost them a very high price. Read the last four verses of Proverbs chapter 6. What will happen to them will give you the shivers, my brethren. They want to do some wrongdoings, they want to take drugs, they want to do dishonest things, but I have to become rich. My friends, you shouldn't want anything that doesn't come from God. The son then should have gone to his father and explained to him what he was thinking and his ways. My brethren, you have to do that. Enter the presence of God, as Jesus said, shut the door of your room, and then open yourself to God. Pray and cry and talk to God and then you will finally be heard by our Lord God, and he will answer you. I have declared my ways. You have to describe the good ways. When the disciples returned, Jesus had sent them so they could preach the gospel, and they told everything to Jesus. They opened their hearts to him when they talked to Jesus. When you begin to declare your ways, God will guide you. You have to let yourself be guided by God. The prodigal son should have done that before asking to be given the portion of goods that fell to him, his possessions. He should have said, Father, I need your help. You are an experienced man. You are a fair man. You are kind to all of your servants. There's enough bread for them. They have it all. But I've been overwhelmed by this desire and by this thought, Father. I want to live by myself. The Bible forbids that. Did you know that? The Bible says that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife in marriage. But my son is 18 or my daughter is 18. I want them to live alone. You could have an unpleasant surprise. Beware, brethren, it's written in the Bible. A man shall leave his father and mother 
only as permitted by God and be joined in marriage to his wife. Or a woman shall leave her father and mother to be joined to a man in marriage. But the son wanted to leave and not to get married, so he was wrong. He should have stayed at home. If he had been honest about that, his father could have told him, My son, there's something you need to have, wisdom. You're going to go through this and this, and he did. Praise the Lord, for he repented. Make me like one of your hired servants. God is going to treat you as a child. This is what the word tells us. But you have to declare it. If you declare it, you won't have to go through these experiences that could scar you for life in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind forever, or even physically. Because you will become exposed, and you shouldn't ever be exposed. So listen to what God has been telling you. God has a plan. Our Savior would descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the ancestors. And Jacob, who had 12 sons, he came from Judah. Two sons of Judah, God killed them. God killed them, he did. Let's read about this in the book of Genesis in chapter number 38. Things can become quite serious when people don't listen, when they understand the plans of God, but they won't listen, and they knew it. It had been prophesied. Our Savior would descend from them, but those two men, they were just, they were just foolish and were overpowered by iniquity. Genesis chapter number 38. I'm searching the book of Exodus. Of course, I'll never find it there. Verse number 7, if you please. I'm just going to read this now, but you should read the whole story later because it's beautiful and it will help you. Let's read together. But heir, Judah's firstborn, now pay attention because the firstborn was the heir. That man would give origin to the lineage that the Savior would come from, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. Wouldn't it be easier for that heir to be good in the sight of the Lord? But he was wicked because he did things he wasn't supposed to. They explain it in the next verse. But they use language that's quite difficult. Children may not understand it, but adults can understand it. So we know what happened. And Judah said to Onan, his other son, Go into your brother's wife. When a man died, their brother should take the widow as his wife. But that's because of the Savior. And marry her and raise up an heir to your brother. But Onan knew that the heir would not be his, for it should be the son, the firstborn of his brother who died. And it came to pass, when he went in to his brother's wife, that he emitted on the ground, lest he should give an heir to his brother. He didn't want the Savior to come as God had planned. And what happened next? And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, therefore he killed him also. It had to happen. They both died. And the third son became the first son, and Jesus descended from him. My brethren, the best thing in the world is to follow the plan of God. Is there anything tempting you right now? Are you being devastated by temptation? You know it's a sin because the Holy Spirit tells you so and you are shaking. Go into your room and declare your ways to the Lord, the good ones. A terrible executive meeting. Allow me, Lord. Please be patient with me. And the bad ways too. This is what's going on in my mind. God, my heart is full of grudge. It's full of resentment. God, I'm such a bitter person. I'm such an angry person. I feel this and that. God, God, help me, help me, help me. God listens and answers your prayers. The moment you do that with all of your heart, with no reservations, no hesitation, not hiding anything, you will be blessed by the Lord God. For all of us who came to this world, God has a plan for our lives, a beautiful plan. And if we fail to follow it, like both of them did, Er was chosen. He didn't want it. Onan was chosen. He didn't want it. Peter was chosen. He didn't want it. Mary was chosen. She didn't want it. My brethren, want it. Be true children of God. God, today, my old self is dead and a new creation is born. But you're going to become ashamed. They promised they would make a huge scandal. You can feel ashamed for a little while, but don't get cold your whole life. 
If there's a price to pay, then let it be now. But you can't sell yourself short. What did Jesus say? The day he comes, returns, it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the whole earth, and you are not an exception, because you have been chosen to be in the presence of the Lord God. Bow your heads now, God. These are serious words, God. But these are words that touch our hearts and transform people and lift those who have fallen. And today I've come here to ask for help, God. Help from the heavens, divine help, powerful help. Oh, Spirit of God, I am begging you, come to bless us now. Remove everything that's been disturbing these lives and turn these people into the people that you have planned them to be. Satan has been tempting these people. They have great potential, but vanity has been tempting them. But God, not only vanity, but they've also been tempted by depravity. And not only depravity, but also evilness. The greatest of all sins has been flooding their minds. And these people are now begging you, God. And Father, otherwise, it will come as a snare, and these people will be captured. And now, God, please allow me to invoke the name of Jesus Christ to determine this in the spiritual realm, that snare that holds people captive will become destroyed now. They are free now. God, teach them to go into their rooms and tell them what room it is and to shut the door O oh Lord, and to open their hearts to you, and to declare, my Lord, all their ways to you. Sometimes, my Lord, something that is acclaimed, that is behind it all, there's such an evil work behind it that people are crying. Please help me, God. I need you. God, give us the victory. May everyone be blessed right now in the holy name of the Lord Jesus and you say amen. Praise the Lord. And now let's go in the name of Jesus to the real life drama segment. By the age of 13, holding a cigarette in your hands, you know, it looked nice and all, so it was, well, we felt more, more adult. So I smoked more and more. She smoked a lot. I tried to quit it when I had my son, you know, because he was born with respiratory problems. And then I was taken by guilt, you know, because I smoked when I was pregnant. So then I tried to quit, but I couldn't. And for a long time, I had to live with that guilt. And so I tried to get rid of that guilt with black magic. She was deeply involved in black magic, but it, it didn't really help her. Back then, Katarina was married to a truck driver. I couldn't stand that life. I can say that I raised my son by myself and always on the go. I looked for a, for a sorcerer and asked them for guidance. You can find another husband, you can find someone else, a much better one, you know. And I believed them, and I decided to end my marriage. I think she felt very lonely because he was a truck driver. So I started going to dance clubs, you know. So I went out to dance, I drank, I smoked. And then I realized that I was drinking every day. I coughed all the time. And at times during the winter, I suffered from acute respiratory infection because of the cold weather plus the cigarette. A mess, I felt lonely. At one of those parties, Katarina meets someone but the relationship only lasts four months. In less than two months, we had moved in together. And so he drank and I drank and we would fight. He became quite aggressive when he drank. So I talked to my mother and I moved to my sister's house to take some time off, but I had to support myself. So I found a job. On the third day when I was coming home from work, I stumbled on the street. I fell and I broke my hip. And during that time when I, when I couldn't walk, I started to suffer from panic disorder. She watches The Faith Show. That's when Dr. Suarez said, it's not enough just to read the Bible. You have to comprehend what the Word says. Seek God, because God will bring you 
the solution, it touched me. Because what he was saying, he was talking to me. And so I started to go to church. I couldn't sleep all night long. So I would turn on the television and watch the faith show. I always heard the word. I always heard something that would comfort me. And I would go back to sleep and that made me feel good. And then I thought I will sponsor the faith show so that more people can perhaps during the night find some help from God. Katarina spends the New Year's Eve in the church's watch. 2014 starts in a different way. When I woke up in the morning, I couldn't believe it myself because I didn't feel like smoking. I only felt happy for being free and I asked myself, why didn't I just quit smoking before? I didn't know God. In one year, I broke free from my addictions. Smoking, drinking from the panic disorder. I also quit going to, to nightclubs. I feel free today. She's a different person now, and she's also much healthier. Nowadays, I believe that I may have given up on him, but he never gave up on me. He came and rescued me. Praise the Lord, brethren. Listen, this is the work that our church does. This is the work that we all must do. It's not our place to look at people and judge them. But they have lost their minds. They left their husband. They're going out. They're going to nightclubs. They're going out all the time. No, no, no. We have to talk to them about the word. Satan has done his work. So it's up to us who belong to God to speak up our decision, our declaration that that person is no good. But it's the opposite. The demon using them is no good. Any person who has sinned, no matter the kind of offense, they're in the evil hands of the devil. If we're able to cast them out, From that evil spirit, temptation will disappear and they will be restored. If you belong to God and you're being tempted somehow, my brethren, search yourself and say, I'm being convinced by the devil. Stop it. Make a stand. I'm going to be grounded in God. And I am going into my room and I'm going to declare all my ways. Do not be deceived by success. You're good at your job. You're good at sales. You're good at what you do whatever it may be, but that doesn't mean God approves it. A sin is a sin. Absolutely no one has permission to sin. No one has permission to do what's wrong. It's written in the Bible, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So, so good things. And if someone comes to you With a wonderful proposal, Dr. Suarez, that is the person. Look them in the eyes. They could be beautiful. Satan, stay away from them. The demon is in charge of that work, and you will be freed from that, and God will make you triumphant in the name of Jesus. Speaking of so many wonders, let's go to our question and answer segment. Dr. Suarez, how can I be sure my offering is pleasing God? because the intention must come from God. There's nothing we can offer to the Lord, but I'll bring him my offer, I'll bring him anything, then don't, my brethren. The pastor asks for an offering. Let's say they have to pay the electricity bill. Brethren, our bill here amounts to, let's say, 10,000, 50,000, 2,000, I don't know. And I would like the attendees to foot the bill. Is anyone willing to offer X? And they feel it, I am pastor. If you didn't feel it, don't do it. God knows how to do his work. We don't have to beg here. For the love of God, please help. Don't be evil. Come on. Let's, let's have some dignity. If I have to do that, then I'd rather not to preach the gospel. I'd rather not preach at all. Should I start to act smart or cry or lie? No. I have to have some dignity because I will be before the Lord someday and I will render account of my actions. And there are many things that I should I have to go into that room and have a serious chat with God while there's still time. I want to have a clear conscience. The worst thing is when you don't have a clear conscience. Question number two. Dr. Suarez, what is the key for people to truly know God? The Word of God, that's all there is. Stay firm in His Word because you should know. The Bible tells us that the Lord will be known. I am in church and the pastor is preaching. Perhaps the pastor is not really inspired that day. Or maybe I'm not inspired to listen. 
because the word can be very clear sometimes. Lord, I'm in your house and I want to learn. For example, when I come here to preach, I say, God, I need you to use me as a prophet. I have to prophesy. I have to disseminate your word or I'll have wasted time. And there are days I preside five, six services a day or even seven, sometimes 13. And what's the point then? It would be useless. It won't change anything. It's good for nothing. It's meaningless. So I have to be used by God. As I said earlier, if I notice God won't bless someone, I become worried. My Lord, I have to deliver your message because all of us, regardless of our age, we all are, sooner or later, put to the test. The enemy will attack us. And if I am in the presence of God, then I know that God is speaking to me and God speaks through his holy word and only through the Bible. Let me pray for those who are at home. God, I need you to come and bless these people. Bless every one of them. God, there are people who felt it. I need to go into my room. Oh Lord, show them where their room is, God, in your holy presence. God, take these people to their room. And there, my Lord, in that room where no one can hear them, they will close themselves to the world and open themselves to you. They will tell you all the truth. They will declare all of their ways. They are not sure about some of them, whether they are lawful or not. Some of them they know they are, and others are not. God, please help these people. May no lost son or lost daughter exist from now on. My Lord, may none of them lose your holy blessings. I now destroy all the works of the devil in their lives, and I say, stay away from their lives and go away in the name of the Lord Jesus. And amen.